Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be checking out and reviewing Power Toys for Windows 10. Power Toys adds additional utilities to Windows 10 and is developed by Microsoft as an open source project available to everyone to use and contribute to. So let's first explore what utilities they currently have offered to us. This is the .25 version release. It's the preview. So I'll start out by using one of the utilities from Power Toys first. If I do Alt Space, that will launch this new search bar right in the middle of the screen. I think this is a great addition with the Power Toys utilities for Windows 10. I really enjoy using this instead of having to go down to the bottom left or using the shortcut for that, which is the Windows key followed by an S. I do again alt space and just start typing here in the middle of the screen. So if I wanted to launch Power Toys, I can find it here. And it's warning me that maybe my drives aren't quite indexed correctly. So in order to get better speeds out of this app, I can index my drives and help the search out. So now I can either go up, down with my arrow keys or just press enter on whatever is currently highlighted to go ahead and run the program. It's great to use if you like to search with your keyboard really quick and select things. It doesn't give you a bunch of options you have to scroll through or click through. It, it only just gives you a few options here. So Power Toys is what I want. That actually launches it here in the Task Manager. I'm gonna launch Power Toys so I can look at it. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more operating system and programming videos. So right here, it gives us a little synopsis. Microsoft Power Toys is a set of utilities for power users to tune and streamline their Windows experience for greater productivity. You can check out the GitHub repo from here. So maybe there's more utilities that have been added. Make sure to keep checking back on the repository that way you don't miss out on any new or extra utilities that they might be developing. Mainly, I want to go through my favorite ones to use. So I want to stick to the keyboard manager first because it can be a pain sometimes in Windows to actually remap keys. And this is a great utility to go ahead and do just that. We can remap a key. Let's say you're used to copy and paste from a Mac OS perspective, which I am. They use the command key, which really on a keyboard, the alt key is probably the closest thing you have to command, but the functionality is really related to control. So what I like to do is add a new key and remap it. I do type and press in the key I want to remap, which is the control key. So I have the control left key after I hit it. I hit the okay button and then it says, what do I want to map that key to? Well, I hit the type again, and now I'm going to remap it to the left Alt key. If I hit OK, it's as easy as that. Now Control has become Alt, and I'll also do this with the right side. So I'm going to do right Control with right Alt. And now if I hit OK, it'll tell me that the following keys are unassigned. Well, that's a good mention. We should assign Alt to Control at least. That way we still have access to that one. So you can do the other way as well. I'll do Alt to Control and Alt to Control. Now that I have that done, I get no complaints and I have my keys remapped the way I like them. So now I'll check if this works. I'll launch the Run Utility. Let's see if I can simply copy this here. I'll do Alt C. And now if I erase this, if I type Alt V, I did a paste. So that looks like it's working just great for me. No need to mess with my registry in order to actually change the way keys are mapped. This is an amazing tool to have. I do like the fact that it's also directly from Microsoft and it's open source development. That way I don't have to get some third party tool that remaps keys or again, mess with the registry. Great thing to have here in Windows 10. One of my favorite tools here in Power Toys. Moving on, another thing I like using is the Fancy Zones. Currently, to launch it, we have to hit the Win key followed by a tick. And if I do, 
we get to specify how we want our template set up. You can kind of see in the background now how things look. And I like this priority grid. Usually when I'm working on things, let's say I'm writing some notes on the right hand side and looking things up and doing some research on the left hand side, especially while programming. This is a nice layout that I like. Uh, sometimes I go with the three columns instead and make them equal distance as far as width goes. But let's stick to the priority grid and you can change the amount of space between zones. I don't need much. So I might just go with four here. You can see how that changed the gaps up and that pretty much does it for me. I'll hit apply and let me open up a few things here. So I just might do a PowerShell along with a web browser. Now, if I hold down the shift key and I move this around, we'll see a number one and a two relaying that I have two places where I can place my window in currently. I'm gonna put it on the one side over here and then I'll highlight this and again, hold down shift and that allows me to create a very nice tiling effect here with my new fancy zones window management system. And this allows me to work with my PowerShell on the right hand side, executing various different commands and researching things on the left hand side. I really like this workflow. So it's another reason I enjoy these power toys. It's great to use here in Windows 10. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit that like button for me. It really does help me out. Some more stuff here. Let's check out the color picker. We'll go through some of these fairly quickly. There's not much to them. In the color picker, we can select what type of representation of a color we want. Let's say we want the hexadecimal representation. If we hit the Windows key followed by Shift and C, now we get this little dialog that allows us to go anywhere in the screen and select a color and know what that color is. So again, Windows Shift C, and now I'm going around the screen and getting the color hue that I'm currently selecting. How great is that? Great if you're working with various different graphics design and you want to kind of match some stuff on your screen. Very easy way to look up what color it is using the color picker. If you don't like using this tool, you can always disable it. That will save some resources for you. So I do suggest disabling these tools or utilities if you're not using them. We'll move on to File Explorer. Now this one doesn't currently have too much going on here. We have just to enable whether or not you wanna preview SVG formatted files inside the File Explorer, or if you want to enable the Markdown preview as well. I'm sure they'll be adding more to this as things develop, but I gotta say, it is nice to be able to see SVG files as a preview in the File Explorer. Image Resizer, not something that I use often, but it does let you resize an image fairly quickly by right clicking on that image. For example, right here, if I hit resize pictures, that allows me with the image resizer of Power Toys, select a small, medium, large, or even a custom fit if I wanted to. So let's say something for let, like YouTube, which is normally 1280 by 720. I can select that, put it in, hit resize, and now I have a new snip called custom of that size. And if I take a look at the size here, it looks like we have 1280 by 1719, very close to 720, must be a rounding error or something there, but that's how that tool works. I don't normally use this. It is nice when I'm creating thumbnails for YouTube videos, but I have this off most of the time. In Power Rename, again, this is not something I use, but it allows you to do a bulk rename if necessary on your system. I normally turn this off, but again, you can right click and use this tool as well. Finally, down to the shortcut guide. This is a fairly decent one. If we close things down, as long as you hold down the Windows key, you'll get a new window that pops up in the background that shows you all the various different shortcuts available currently with your Windows key. If I hit the window key, followed by any of these other letters, 
or combinations that will launch something specific. So right here, it's suggesting if I want to open up Power Toys again, I can hit Windows 3 and we'll see that it's in the background. Also a very nice tool to know about here in Power Toys. Overall, Power Toys is great. Although some of the tools might be a little bit unnecessary, at least for my circumstances, but they might be perfect for you. I do make sure to shut off anything and disable whatever I'm not using. I don't need the extra resources being used up for power toys if I'm not going to actually use the utility. So make sure you do as well. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me and a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.